Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this episode I want to talk about some advanced white balance techniques that you can use for real estate photography that go beyond the standard auto white balance or using a gray card, things I've talked about in prior videos and also in my books and whatnot. So this is an approach that can get you very accurate and I want to show why. You can use this for architectural photography especially if you want to take a little bit more time on site, but you can also apply this in post processing if something goes wrong and you really need to see what's going on because I'm going to cover this in a few different steps. Now, first thing everybody thinks about is, well, you're going to talk about white balance. You're just going to show us another one of those graphs of from orange to blue. No, I'm not. <laughs> what I'm going to be doing is showing how this applies specifically to doing real estate photography interiors, which is one of the biggest challenges that every one of us faces doing real estate photography, especially with flash because we're using a mix of light. Now in the old days, you might have gelled a flash and tried to equal everything out. There's just not enough time on site to do all that. So there's some easier techniques, especially using today's modern technology, some of the newer mirrorless cameras. So I'm going to show you right through the lens how some of this works out, a real live example. I'm going to be going through then a complete graph to show about 40 different images, how that works worked out. I'm not going to go through the 40 images. I'm going to show you some statistics on that and why we have the issues that we do from first running an experiment, showing this stuff real quick. It won't take long, but to really get then a full understanding of what's happening with our 5500 Kelvin flash when we're introducing it into some ambient stuff and then why certain exposure settings are very important to be able to get that balance of exposures that we get the proper white balance settings. But those are just the first two sections that I'm going to be covering here. I'm also going to be covering two other areas as well. So I'm going to be covering how to implement this into a very efficient workflow so that you can use this on site very quickly, faster than using a gray card actually, and also less dangerous of moving stuff around and whatnot. But then the fourth thing is what's my fallback plan when all else fails? Now, you know in other prior videos I've talked about color corrections and you can do a lot of that, but this will get you very accurate results it's extremely, extremely close. So you can get an idea though of what you should be doing, but also why, what's really going on. First thought a lot of people have is I'm using a flash. I'm using flashes all over. They're 5,500 Kelvin. Why isn't that measuring 5,500 Kelvin when I do white balance? So let's dig into that. And first, let's take a look at this quick experiment. So this is a good room to run this experiment on. A portion of this experiment we'll use in the workflow later in the video after showing this experiment that I'm going to run through results of a lot of photos and how this works out so we can get a good idea of what's really happening when we're trying to do flambient, when we're trying to take ambient shots, and when we're taking flash shots, and why the white balance isn't what you may think it would be. Right now this is set to auto white balance, and just like I show in prior videos, I'm using that natural uh, light auto that comes with the Z cameras gets us pretty close on what we need to even with flash. But what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to use something different for our experiment. Before we do that though we can see that what we're trying to do here is exposed to the right. So once again that histogram is weighted over in the three quarter mark and that's what we're also aiming for with the flash. The exposure settings similar to what I use throughout my books and videos. If you're not familiar with why I use ISO 320 you want to download the interiors book go through that. Moving on here though, let's take a look. If we get this shot, it would be pretty well close, but for our experiment what we want to do is start using Kelvin settings. So what we'll do is just go into here and select Kelvin. Your camera may be different on how this is done, but all the cameras allow you to do this. And then what I'm going to be doing is changing that Kelvin to something that matches the color here. So I'm just going to eyeball it in. This can be quicker than using a gray card, especially like on using a Z camera. All that you have to do is use the uh, function button on the front, the F1 button on the Z cameras, and we'll take that down until it starts looking good. This is something I use for video, by the way. When I finally get to something that looks about realistic, right about there, that's when we're at 3850. So that's pretty good, and that would be what I'd expect when using these uh, other bulbs, these uh, incandescent bulbs up there in the ceiling and over there on the lamp. So that looks pretty good. 
Now, what we want to do though is we want to introduce flash into this. Having flash introduced right now wouldn't do anything. We're already exposing to the right. So what we'll do is we will increase our exposure to where we're about 50%. You can see then the histogram moves to the 50% range. If we were to then increase our, our white balance to 5,000, let's just say, instead of 5,500, 5,000, of course, this is what it would look like with just ambient. If we introduce flash into this, then this is what it would look like. It's going to be a lot of orange throughout the picture. So when we adjust that down, then it comes down to about 4,200 Kelvin to get that. So it's not 5,000 Kelvin from using the flash or 5,500 from using the flash, but it's still higher than the 3,850 that we started with. Now let's drop that uh, ambient amount down to about 30% by once again increasing that shutter speed. Increasing the shutter speed is reducing the amount of ambient. Let's take another flash shot. We can see there's less orange in this. It's definitely getting a little bit cooler, closer to what we want. But when we measure it all out and get it even to where it looks right, it's about 45 100 Kelvin. Let's do that again by increasing the, the uh, shutter speed so that we have about a 20% amount of ambient here. You can see it on the histogram at 20% ambient taking a shot. Almost all of that warmth is gone. We're left with mostly flash now, but still it's not quite there. If we even this out to where it's, where it's supposed to be, then we're looking at about 4,900 Kelvin. So now let's really reduce it and let's increase that shutter speed to where we've got maybe just about 5%. So we're near sync speed here on um, using the, uh, the, the shutter speed here at about 1 1 60th of a second, 200th of a second would really knock it out. Either way, when we take a flash shot with this, we're really spot on. Looking at this at 5,000 Kelvin, then all that we have, all of that uh, uh, warmth is gone. It's almost all using flash now. So when we started, we had a lot of ambient in the picture and that was dominating the scene. But as we started getting rid of those ambient artifacts and introducing flash, we got closer to the flash color temperature of 5,500 Kelvin, but we never could achieve that 100% because once again, we're not the only light in that room there are still other bits of light that are in there. So it's a mix, but that mix will change. And let's take a look at that on a graph. So what I've done here is taken a variety of images that both had an ambient and a flash shot for the flambient and been able then to measure what the white balance is of just ambient. And then of course, when we start introducing about 90% flash where that histogram is almost all the way over to the left with maybe only about 10% ambient in the mix. And that's very typical of when we're shooting for flambient. So we can see going way down here at the bottom, starting out, some of these images were really struggling about 2500 ambient, you can see 2500 Kelvin, and eventually there were some rooms that had a lot of daylight coming in and were about then at 5000 ambient. So we're taking a look at a curve that goes up as I put this in here so we can see this uh, in the right order because as you compare that then to the flash, we can see a trend that goes from maybe 3,900 when we're at the low end, but look at the popular number that keeps going across here. It's about 4,500. In fact, we see that almost all the way across the board in this particular range when we're in ambient at about 3,500 all the way up until we get past 4,300. So during this range, this steep curve here, that's a lot of the uh, incandescent lighting. And there's a variety of stuff down here that's causing all kinds of wreaking havoc with different fluorescent lights and old, old bulbs, and also some color cast, we have to remember, that comes off of stuff. So when we're shooting flash inside, a lot of times we're bouncing, and there's other casts that are coming off of it. But all the way up, we can see a trend until we get up to near the 5,500 Kelvin mark, and that's where there's really not much of a difference when we're up to about 4,500 and up higher. There's a couple little peaks here and there, but for the most part, things are fairly even. The big disparity is when we get down here, you know, the first portion of the graph, not so much the 2500, which obviously there's a big difference between what the white balance will be if we use flash, but especially so there's a curve that flattens out up here when we use flash compared to when we're using ambient from 35 to about 4,4300 Kelvin.
Now, besides a few little dips and peaks, we can notice a trend. And that trend is that for the most part, we're at about 4,500 Kelvin on our flash shot. And so this has become my go-to setting. If I'm struggling with something, whether it's not just setting this in camera, most of the time I'm just using auto white balance like I've shown in prior videos I talk about in the books, but this is something that you can do easily enough in Lightroom by just setting the Kelvin value and seeing if you're close enough to it. Instead of trying to use the I, uh, the eyedropper or throwing in a gray card to try to see if that can work, then this uh, 4500 Kelvin is kind of my go-to and you can see why. So it's because we've got quite a mix. Once again, if we were even Steven, right about the 5000 Kelvin mark, then everything really isn't that much different. A couple hundred Kelvin here and there, not bad. But when we're in this bigger range down here, this is when we're looking at a big difference of like about a thousand Kelvin, 1200 Kelvin or more. And once again, we're able to dominate the scene with flash, but we still have that little 10% mix. So that's why we're at about that 4,500 range. Until you actually see that you've got a room that's very well lit from the outside, there are really no incandescent bulbs, and maybe you can even tell that there's very bright white coming off of uh, some of the uh, LED lighting inside. But no matter what, you're shaded inside, you're gonna have color casts. But anyways, we can see that for the most part, there is never rarely a time when we actually reach 5,500 Kelvin, which is is what our flash is emitting. Instead, when we're inside and we're doing flash shots to do the flambient, bouncing off of a white ceiling, which technically speaking is probably a gray, not pure white, also gathering in a little bit of cast that comes off of that, and then having to include a little bit of the ambient light, at least 10% of that, we can see that we most often, most often than not, range in our flash shot at about 4,500 Kelvin. So using the experiment like I just did, you can try this at home as well. Get into a room that has a lot of incandescent lighting, change the light bulbs if you'd like to, and then you can see how based on a percentage, like I just did in that experiment, how you're gonna see this even out. Now, when we got down on the last experiment to where we were almost flooding the room with a flashed light, where we were only maybe at about five, 10%, percent ambient, hardly anything there. We were still at about 5,000 Kelvin, and we can see that on other pictures I've taken, that gets to be pretty well even Steven around here with not much difference. So the flash really does help. If you can reduce that ambient a lot, then of course you're going to be the only light in there, provided you don't have color casts in there. So applying this into your workflow is very easy and it's very fast. Just like I showed in the first step of that experiment is you can adjust using a mirrorless camera. You can watch your white balance setting and get something that's very close. Just take one picture while you're on site. It'll get you a very good example of what you're dealing with in that particular property. Now, Technically speaking, yes, every room will have a different white balance setting, but this will get you very close so that you can see based off that, what should you probably use for a white balance setting in your flash shot? So that'll give you a kind of a guide going back to that chart on what you would be setting. If you're way down here, you're measuring 2,500 Kelvin, well, you might not wanna use 4,500 Kelvin on your flash shot. But as I showed, between that range of about 3,000 to about 4,300 Kelvin or so, and about 4,500 Kelvin using your flash shot. If you have only about 10, 20% ambient in your shot, you've eliminated most of that with a high enough shutter speed. So that's the first thing, is taking that first reference shot. So after you do that, then the next thing is you can just shoot the rest of them in auto white balance if you want. And like I've shown uh, on prior videos, the recommended auto white balance settings for Nikon, Canon, and Sony, you can use that if you want, or if you're really having a big problem with it, go ahead and, and set it to something that falls in line more of what I just showed in the graph and what we were able to calculate out from that experiment. A lot of times that's gonna be about 4,500 Kelvin, but you can tell off that graph. But for the most part, just use auto white balance, keep going. Then the last step of the workflow is when you're in post, that's when you can start adjusting this stuff. You could just input in the white balance setting, let's say 4,500 Kelvin. Now, something to bear in mind when you're in Lightroom though doing this is that because white balance is actually done from a set of 
offset numbers. Every piece of software that has to do its demosaicing process to decode the raw file will then interpret the red and green shifts a little bit differently. So the tint may be off. A lot of times, for instance, on the Z cameras, you may notice that your tint is up and around 10, a positive 10. But if you were to look at it in Nikon OEM software, you would see that tint's right around the zero range. That's because Adobe has to try to adjust during its demosaicing process to compensate a little bit for a little bit over green of what it's capturing. Anyways, topic possibly for another time, but those are the things to do then in post-processing for the workflow. But there's also then my fallback, which I wanna to get to next. When I'm struggling with white balance, whether it's auto white balance, whether it's being set in the camera as I'm working through, a, for instance, an architectural shoot, which a lot of times I won't use auto white balance, those are times when I'll just use a go-to setting of that 4,500 Kelvin. So as you saw in the graph, 4,500 Kelvin was very common throughout an entire range of mixed white balance. Anytime we might have had an ambient white balance that measured 2,500 Kelvin all the way up to almost 4,300 Kelvin, there was quite often, more often than not, than 4,500 Kelvin measured on the flash shot when the flash was taking up about 80 to 90% of the light that was emitting the color temperature than of that frame. So that gets me a good starting point. If I notice though that, hey, the ambient shot looks pretty good and that's at about almost 5,000 Kelvin, I'm gonna use 5,000 Kelvin on that flash shot and kind of see where it goes. Worst case scenario with fallback plan, if you didn't use a gray card, which also has its challenges as I just mentioned, you can also then use one of the color correction techniques using the curves layer. Now, if, you're, if you've got the books, then you know uh, the advanced editing book has methods for doing this. Also, Mastering Color in Photography, my book on that, has those advanced methods as well to get you very close and very accurate measurements. Anyways, I hope this was useful for you and that you get a better understanding of how white balance is affected doing interior real estate photography, especially when we're shooting for flambient. If you did like this video and you'd like to see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it won't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.